Shake it, baby. Shake it, baby. Shake it, baby. The Saturn and the entire 32-bit era was a special time for first-person shooters. As games moved into the realm of 3D polygons, so too did they begin to experiment with AI, real-time physics, and multiplayer. It was a generation that saw both the end of the classic run-and-gun shooter and the perfection of it. Shooters also began to migrate away from the computer and into the living room. The Saturn archives a unique library of these games. It has many great ports of PC classics, as well as a few original titles that deviated from the norm. It's a dark, brooding, and violent area of gaming history. These are the first-person shooters of the Sega Saturn. Let's start off the list with perhaps the hardest hitting 32-bit shooter ever made. Quake is without a doubt a masterpiece, though it was essentially a higher definition conglomeration of the gothic fantasy space horror trance it had done before, it made a huge splash in the FPS market. Level design is undisputedly some of the best ever in a first person shooter. The next generation was here and Quake knew it was leading the parade. Even booting this game up is intimidating. It will forever have that new game feel, as it truly was something new. Not only was the world built out of polygons, but we had CD quality sound, lighting effects, distinct enemy damage animations, and even physics. Lobbing a well-timed grenade never gets old, and it hooked a generation of gamers' imaginations, pondering what the future could bring. The Saturn version retains all of this despite having a slightly toned down teen rating, but don't let that fool you, there is still a lot of violence in this version. The levels are mostly intact and a few Saturn exclusive maps were included for goodwill. Though it lacks multiplayer and the awkward programming of the Saturn's 3D capabilities are noticeable, this is a very good console port. It controls well, the frame rate is solid, and the few bonus stages warrant PC enthusiasts to check it out. Original production by Lobotomy Soft, Power Slave, also known as Exhumed, is a crazy mix of Metroidvania and Run and Gun. As a lone soldier sent to Egypt to fight off the apocalypse, you'll face all manner of supernatural foes and puzzles. By traveling between areas, you'll collect new keys and skills needed to progress in the game. Power Slave forces you to backtrack to previous levels in order to open new doors and reach new areas. The shooting feels tight, and the ammo system is well done, keeping the action flowing. Though some of the levels can be a bit barren and simple, the action usually makes up for it. And this shorter level layout works in the game's favor as to not make things too confusing. It should be noted we are watching footage of the PlayStation port, which was slightly different from the Saturn version and yet again different from the PC version. Fans of Metroid and classic FPS games will have a lot of fun in Power Slave. The King makes a toned down, but still very fun appearance on Sega's 32-bit hardware. The sound is stellar, the controls are perfect, and Lobotomy's reworking of the game to the Slave Driver engine added some nice new lighting effects. In case you've been living under a rock for the past 15 years and have no idea what I'm talking about, Duke Nukem 3D is kind of a big deal. This version is very playable and very fun. Though some of the soundtrack has been redone, some levels absent, and there is no split screen, this is one of the better ways to play Duke Nukem on a home console. The Saturn release even had Netlink in the US so you can compete online with your friends. Pretty damn cool. Duke Nukem 3D did a lot of things right. The weapon and special items were a ton of fun to experiment with. Not to mention the level design and clever inclusion of these items made progression more dynamic and interactive. Despite getting thrown into the bundle category of classic shooters with Doom and the likes, Duke was fairly innovative and certainly deserves the praise he gets. It's a change up from what we expect from shooters nowadays. There aren't many shooters that force you to platform hop or solve puzzles and look for secrets. But if you're willing to open up to the ideas of old, Duke is one of the best. Damn, I'm looking good. Another world. 
the world of Hexen. More than Doom with swords and sorcery, Hexen is a unique masterpiece among Id and Raven's classic library. A sort of first-person gauntlet-style action RPG, you start by choosing a class. Once settled into your avatar, you slice, dice, cast, and fly through some of the darkest fantasy you'll ever encounter. Gothic cathedrals, icy caverns, and hellish swamps all filled with demons ready to tear you apart. Though the action is fierce, Hexen is more than just run and gun, or punch. The level design is brilliant, sending you off in branching directions and cleverly placed secret rooms. In a way, the winding and transforming passageways often associated with Doom and Quake feel more at home in this fantasy setting. Though it runs a bit slow and the graphics are hardly pushing the boundaries of 32-bit hardware, Hexen on Saturn runs very well. The audio is phenomenal, keeping you glued to the screen for the entire game. Again, multiplayer would have been nice, but even without it, Hexen stands as one of the most enjoyable shooters on the system and of the era. This is one shooter just about any gamer can appreciate regardless of age, taste, and experience. The Saturn has a lot of great original shooters, as well as some great ports. Unfortunately, Doom is not one of the better ones. Though it boasts 59 levels of mayhem from both Doom and Doom 2, the mayhem is often the result of the poor controls and rush porting, rather than the actual gunplay. Don't get me wrong, it is still very playable. It just lost some of the visual flair and audio tracks for ambience the other versions have. In the game's defense, this is only the North American version. In fact, the European release had a two-player mode. The Japanese release also reportedly has some upgraded features and runs better than the Western releases. Doom is Doom. There are a million ways to play it. The Saturn version isn't the worst, but it certainly isn't the best. Collectors and fans of the franchise may want to check this version out, and Saturn owners wanting to blast through a very long, very well-designed game which was the blueprint for all shooters for a very long time, can do that on their console. A lot of people bash on J-Spot. To be fair, a lot of it is justified. The controls are stiff, the character models are abysmal, and the game design is pretty boring. It doesn't really capture the tactical prowess of being in a SWAT team, nor does it make for a great shooter. But underneath all of the things it fails at, J-SWAT does still manage to be pretty entertaining. For one, the game is worth owning for the FMVs alone. They are hilarious. Secondly, despite being incredibly simplistic, progressing through the levels is kind of fun in a sad kind of way. The hit detection sucks, but just getting to see what kind of ridiculous enemies you'll fight next is worth playing through each stage. You are timed each floor to save hostages and eliminate enemies. At the end of the level, you are scored. You can switch between weapons and change the color layout for your HUD. For non-Japanese speakers, there are auto loadouts for setting up each stage, so you don't have to get lost in the kanji if you don't want to. It's a B-lister for sure, and it certainly won't do anything for FPS purists. But for Saturn collectors, J-SWAT is worth the money. Now, let's watch some more of those FMVs. <laughs> I really want to go against the popular opinion and like this game. It does have some strong merits. The game looks and runs quite well in comparison to its contemporaries. The FMB is even rather nice and makes progressing rather fun. Controls are well mapped and work beautifully. And the game is a fast-paced sprint through deadly jungles in search of hidden diamonds and treasure. 
Unfortunately, there are some glaring issues that cannot be ignored. If the game had embraced its Twitch nature a bit more, Congo could have easily been a fun shooter. Instead, it feels unintentionally fast and slippery. Enemies zoom past you, slicing away your health without you even noticing. The path is short and linear, creating more boredom and tedium than fear. On a technical note, Congo is very good. On a game design note, Congo fails at some very basic tests. The enemies are a crazy mix of giant bugs, apes, and totem poles. The levels each contain hidden diamonds, which, if collected, will win you extra ammo at the level's end. It's a good idea, but the chaotic nature of the game does little to encourage scouting. You'll likely only find these diamonds by accident as you sprint through trying to survive the level. If the levels had been a bit more open, it would have suited both the jungle setting and the level design structure better. To top it all off, no multiplayer. Congo isn't a bad game. It's completely playable. It's just a bit frustrating and boring. You'll need to sit down and replay each level several times in order to discover all of its secrets. And that may be asking too much for most players. That concludes part one of our overview of the first person shooters on the Saturn. This edition mostly consisted of the usual suspects with some ports and other notable shooters grounded in tradition. In part two, we will strap into some heavy metal and examine the mech and machine shooters of the Sega Saturn. Stay tuned. ...of supernatural foes and puzzles. By traveling between areas, you'll collect new keys and skills needed to progress in the game. Power Slave forces you to backtrack to previous levels in order to open new doors and reach new areas. The shooting feels tight, and the ammo system is well done, keeping the action flowing. Though some of the levels can be a bit barren and simple, the action usually makes up for it. And this shorter level layout works in the game's favor as to not make things too confusing. It should be noted we are watching footage of the PlayStation port, which was slightly different from the Saturn version, and yet again different from the PC version. Fans of Metroid and classic FPS games will have a lot of fun in Power Slave. The king makes a turn. Let's start off the list with perhaps the hardest hitting 32-bit shooter ever made. Quake is without a doubt a masterpiece, though it was essentially a higher definition conglomeration of the gothic fantasy space horror trends it had done before, it made a huge splash in the FPS market. Level design is undisputedly some of the best ever in a first-person shooter. The next generation was here, and Quake knew it was leading the parade. Even booting this game up is intimidating. It will forever have that new game feel, as it truly was something new. Not only was the world built out of polygons, but we had CD quality sound, lighting effects, distinct enemy damage animations, and even physics. Lobbing a well-timed grenade never gets old, and it hooked a generation of gamers' imaginations, pondering what the future could bring. The Saturn version retains all of this despite having a slightly toned-down teen rating. But don't let that fool you, there is still a lot of violence in this version. The levels are mostly intact, and a few Saturn-exclusive maps were included for goodwill. Though it lacks multiplayer, and the awkward programming of the Saturn's 3D capabilities are noticeable, this is a very good console port. It controls well, the frame rate is solid, and the few bonus stages warrant PC enthusiasts to check it out. An original production by Lobotomy Soft, Power Slave, also known as Exhumed, is a crazy mix of Metroidvania and Run and Gun. As a lone soldier sent to Egypt to fight off the apocalypse, you'll face all men honed down, but still very fun appearance on Sega's 32-bit hardware. The sound is stellar, the controls are perfect, and Lobotomy's reworking of the game to the Slave Driver engine added some nice new lighting effects. In case you've been living under a rock for the past 15 years and have no idea what I'm talking about, 
Duke Nukem 3D is kind of a big deal. This version is very playable and very fun. Though some of the soundtrack has been redone, some levels absent, and there is no split screen, this is one of the better ways to play Duke Nukem on a home console. The Saturn release even had Netlink in the US so you can compete online with your friends. Pretty damn cool. Duke Nukem 3D did a lot of things right. The weapon and special items were a ton of fun to experiment with. Not to mention the level design and clever inclusion of these items made progression more dynamic and interactive. Despite getting thrown into the bundle category of classic shooters with Doom and the likes, Duke was fairly innovative and Shake it baby. Shake it baby. Shake it baby. The Saturn, and the entire 32-bit era, was a special time for first-person shooters. As games moved into the realm of 3D polygons, so too did they begin to experiment with AI, real-time physics, and multiplayer. It was a generation that saw both the end of the classic run-and-gun shooter and the perfection of it. Shooters also began to migrate away from the computer and into the living room. The Saturn archives a unique library of these games. It has many great ports of PC classics, as well as a few original titles that deviated from the norm. It's a dark, brooding, and violent area of gaming history. These are the first-person shooters of the Sega Saturn.